I'm like the uh, I'm like the guy handing out peanuts at the baseball game, except the peanuts are free. So legit, just grab a huge dude, huge handful, huge, like I've I've like bigger than that. Come on. Well, let's have some fun, everyone. Let's do something a little different. Let's break the mold. No pun intended, right? Mm, I better not be breaking my molds. Today we're gonna be making tons of worms, tons, lots. We're gonna be using our uh, fancy clamp system. Well, it's actually on, on that side there. We're gonna be using our big fancy vice clamp to try to bang out as much production as possible. Like I literally wanna make hundreds of worms here and then we're gonna go give them away. We're gonna go find people at popular fishing spots, anglers, maybe even show up at the front door of Bass Pro Shop and just see if we can give away a bunch of worms and see what people's reactions are. If they're happy to receive a bunch of free uh, soft plastic baits or if they're like, dude, get away, there's COVID. Kinda, kinda interested to see. This is gonna be fun. Let's get started. Yeah, look at that. That's that resin off the bottom that we need. We're gonna give this a quick stir and then we're gonna transfer this to our cooking pot and get started. All right, here we have our Presto cooking pot. And here's another quart of plastic going in. We've already got one in there. So now we have like a ton of plastic. And because it's solid color, we can remelt a bunch of this. We're about to have a bunch of worms in not a lot of time. Here we go. All right, here's just a little quick breakdown of today's setup. We have watermelon pigment in the back. Let's see if we can get a little closer, yeah. So some Lureworks watermelon in the back, some Lureworks emerald green and red flake. You guessed it, we're making mean green. One of my favorite colors, excellent color. And then we have lined up probably the bulk of my worm molds. These are all bass tackle molds. You've seen them before. Um, but we're gonna run a ton of stuff with them today. Nine inch ribbon tail, seven inch ribbon tail, six and a quarter inch finesse worm. And we might swap a few things out as we get going, but just to make a bunch of stuff, you, you really don't wanna keep trading out molds. You just wanna keep clamping and running, clamping and running. Have a cookie sheet over there to lay baits out on. So anyway, we have our Dead On Plastics Worm Blend. Shout out to Dead On Plastics. Awesome product, supported the channel. Same with AI molds, couldn't do it without them. We got our plastic cooking, and uh, as soon as that's ready, we'll mix up the color, and then we'll start running. This is gonna be super fun. Hopefully we can find some people to, uh, to, <laughs> to react well to this, and hopefully they'll like the baits. All right, let's take a look. So, plastic looks good and done. We need Lureworks watermelon. And basically, we're just gonna blend this watermelon pigment with that emerald green pigment. Nothing too fancy. It's a beautiful color. It's an easy color. And uh, it's the color that I've chosen to make our giveaway worms here. So, should be a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and start getting this mixed. Yeah. I'll probably need a lot more pigment than that. Yeah, you can kind of see it's starting to be green there, right? Yeah. Got to get the angle correct. This plastic is very hot. In fact, let's see what it is. Yeah, 358, yeah. I knew it was about right. It's running pretty thin, so it's probably a little bit hotter than that, uh, particularly internally. But yeah, basically we just need to keep adding this till we just get the proper amount of saturation. So. I like to kind of mix them 50-50, so if I was making a smaller version of this, I would just count out maybe 20 drops of each. Maybe slightly more watermelon than the uh, emerald because the emerald is a little bit stronger. Can tend to overpower the uh, watermelon. Yeah, y'all see that? Ooh, looking pretty. There's where we are. I like what I'm seeing. Time to add our red flake. And we need to add quite a bit of red flake. So instead of using the normal size, oops, scooper here, this half teaspoon, we're gonna use a half cup. Look at this, this is gonna be hilarious. 
We're not going to use like the whole thing, but this is the size of the measurements that we're playing with today. <laughs> uh, wife is going to kill me because I totally took that out of the kitchen. It's never been used in bait making. But you know what? You have to do what you have to do. The show must go on. Oh yeah, that's starting to look about right. Oh yes. There it is, folks. There it is. Mean green. All right, we have the air compressor fired up. It is time to clamp the molds. And we are ready to go. I mean, is that still just not the coolest thing? Let's just watch it do it for a couple of times. Just fascinating. All right, here we go. Got a few injectors ready and let's run them down. Here we go. Sometimes I just use the injector to mix my flake up. I know y'all can't hear me too well from this angle, but isn't that color pretty? It's just simple and nice. It's not trying to be anything too complicated. Next up. Our finesse worms here. This long skinny injector. And so on. All right, let's release and see what we've got. Lots of kind of plastic leftovers, that's okay. You put them in that cup back there, then you can remelt them later once that cup starts to fill up. So you can uh, kind of recycle your plastic as you go. None of these uh, little leftovers have to be waste. So anyway, oh, hold on, quick drum roll. We almost forgot. Quick little single stroke roll, here we go. Let's see how we did. All right. Well, it looks like it did in the cup. Can't ask for any more than that. Look at this. Oop. Yeah, mean green, everyone. Watermelon and emerald and some red flake. I first learned about this color back in my uh, sort of wholesale retail days. A uh, local store ordered up like 700 of these in these two worms and uh, sent me a sample. It was an old worm, you know, that wasn't in production any longer. And uh, I did, I basically just did a custom color match for them. And I've just kind of remembered it ever since. You know, it's not a hard um, recipe to remember, but you know, it's several years old now but it's always uh, been one of my favorites. We're gonna keep looking at the uh, sevens here. These are the seven inchers. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Add them to the stack. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take the uh, runners off and those will be remelted as well, okay? So now we have the first run of ribbon tails all together. We're gonna lay those out on the cookie sheet, then we're gonna open up our finesse worms and we're ready for round two. Okay, and here is the first run of finesse worms. Looking good, looking good. Mean green. Hopefully uh, a few random strangers and anglers will like these. I mean, I don't know. I'd feel pretty special if somebody ran up to me and gave me 50 of these. All right, round two. Hmm. 
All right, and there are all the nines and seven inches together from round two. Nice big wad of worms, and uh, we're gonna add them on the stack. All right, let's go ahead and clamp back up. And here are the finesse worms. We'll take the uh, runners off real fast so that you can better see them. And there is round two of our main green finesse worms. And here's already the leftover kind of sprue runner cup and um, what comes out of the injector, the injector plugs. So we've already got over two cups here of remelt that we can add back to the pot. All right, we're gonna show you a little bit of round three. We have the uh, leftover sprue cup still melting down, so we haven't added it to the pot yet, but we have plenty left to do another run. And of course, there goes the compressor. We've put quite a dent in our pot here, but this is just wildly satisfying. Yes. All right, refill. It's like getting a refill on your, uh, uh, let's see, what, what did we used to do back in the day? We would get refills on our soda pop at the gas station. Yeah, just dated myself there. All right, here are the ribbon tails from round three. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Gonna add them to the stack. And then we'll probably just show you the finesse worms from round three and then subsequent rounds. Um, we probably won't show a whole lot of it. We'll just kind of show you the mass once we're done. Well, if you've ever wondered what a few hundred worms looks like, fresh out of the molds before being packaged and hanging on the Walmart shelves and Bass Pro Shop shelves near you, this is kind of what it looks like. We have just a sea of mean green. I mean, that is just worms for days. If local Tallahassee anglers don't want a piece of this pie, then man, I'm ashamed to be from old Tally Ho. Yeah, that's like a lot of worms. How many you ask? I have no idea. I'm not about to count all that. That is way too much work. Anyway, we're gonna stop it here for the day. We're gonna run these around over the weekend. And uh, yeah, hopefully that becomes very interesting. Hopefully people uh, take to it well. I know I would. Let's go find out. All right, so we are probably at um, Tallahassee's most busy bank fishing destination. It's a little chain of lakes in the Lafayette, uh, Lake Lafayette chain. And they actually, it's really neat. They purposely built all these berms, all these fingers out, in, out into the lake to provide lots of bank access for fishing. I see a couple guys down here on a dock. Now it's kind of a windy cold day. Uh, so unfortunately there's not a lot of people here. So I may have to film this in several locations over the course of a few days. Um, but we're gonna go down there and see if we can bother these folks and uh, see if they want some free worms. So here we go. All right, a little glamour pan of our uh, uh, tray of baits here. And uh, literally, we're just gonna walk down to the lake with this giant tray of worms. I don't even know if these guys bass fish. So like this, this could be a complete bust but uh, hopefully I don't trip and spill these. And uh, the lake's down here, of course. So we're just gonna walk up and see if they want some free baits. Yeah, these people are probably wondering what the heck they're, they're seeing here. Let's, let's go see what's up. All right, so I just met these gentlemen. Y'all are from Arizona, right? Yeah. What, what part of Arizona? Uh, Phoenix. Phoenix, beautiful. I had some family that moved to Arizona. They, they were from here, like my whole family's from Tallahassee. We've never gone anywhere. But they uh, they moved to Arizona, and uh, and they just they were like, man, it's so different. The like they just said it's dusty half the time, but they loved it. They absolutely loved it. They hated hated to come back. Have, have y'all been to Florida yet for our wonderful summers where it's just hot and humid? Dude, the air the air sticks to you like glue. So anyway, yeah, these gentlemen are down here fishing, and uh, we just kind of went over what these worms are. So so y'all don't normally bass fish with artificials, but you're willing to give it a try. Well, this right here is it. So basically, uh, just gra grab a bunch of them. You know, so sa save me some, but those those are seven inch ribbon tails over there. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Then we got nine inches, nine inches. Those are uh, finesse worms, like the little skinny ones. These ones? Yep, yep, those are finesse worms. 
And you know, I, I, yeah, dude, good, grab, grab a handful, man. 250 worms here, guys. <laughs> so everybody has a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and then, you know, absolutely. And, you know, there's there's pl plenty of fun ways to rig these. Once y'all get the hang of it, you, you'll be catching fish on them. Excellent. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm Chris, by the way. And uh, you, yeah, yeah, you can find me on YouTube at World's Worst Fishing. You, you can, you can start making these. Like that's, that's why I filmed the videos is to show people. Well, I don't want to make them. I just want to catch fish with them. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, no, yeah, just you know, if you're not too familiar yet with fishing artificial worms, tons of video, tons of video content out there. Well, not necessarily. Like I, I do more how to make them, but but you can find tons of videos on how to use them Excellent. from people much better than me. So, Excellent. yeah, I just, I, I make them. Other people use them normally how it goes so hey hey thank y'all so much for cooperating and uh best of luck and safe travels back to arizona thank you y'all have a good one all right so just met these two nice gentlemen from valdosta georgia which is about a, what, what would you say about an hour here from tallahassee hour 45. Hour, okay hour 45 wow it's been a long time since i've been to valdosta i probably last time i went there i went to uh wild adventures i think so it's 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 been a while but uh, anyway they're down here fishing and uh they were uh they were interested in the worms so come on gentlemen grab some yeah so those are uh, seven inch ribbon tails right there. Over here we have a couple nine inchers and then those are, uh, the skinny ones are finesse worms. And uh, I've got a freezer bag if y'all need a place to put them. Yeah, you know, and basically just uh, Texas rig them up or, or just whatever you want to do. You know, uh, I, I see one of y'all had a swim bait, right? Yeah. Okay, okay, so y'all do do some bass fishing. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. What, what's your personal best? Nine pounds. Was that caught over in the Valdosta area? Miami. Yeah. They, oh, there's some biggins down there, man. And you said that you don't. I haven't caught anything. Okay. Okay. So, so it's, yeah, he was telling. Right. 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 Yeah. He was. He was saying he doesn't fish a whole lot. So welcome to to the hobby. And uh, I wish you. I wish you success soon. So uh, yeah. There's. I mean. There's. There's great fishing up here in town. You know these spots get get a lot of pressure, but uh, you keep you keep with it. Right now, Lake Jackson here in Tall Tallahassee is on fire on fire there's been three double digit bass caught uh just in february wow. like like 10 pounds or better so uh, you know those are they, they were caught by a couple local guys that really kind of know what they're doing out there like the lake's real low so when you get out there it's like ducks on a pond please enjoy the worms fellas it was nice to meet y'all best of luck fishing today and uh hope y'all catch some fish apparently it's like really hard to find people out fishing I'm, I'm disappointed where are all the anglers at the bass are starting to spawn people love is in the air they are starting to bed now's your time now's your time that you can get good bank fishing in they like the big bass are never gonna be closer to the banks than they are right now and I'm driving through all the popular spots it's a little crummy day outside but I mean come on got to be more people out than this all right we're down at another pond i see a few teenagers down here bass fishing so hopefully they'll be interested in some free baits people i mean seriously i'm 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 like the uh i'm like the guy handing out peanuts at the baseball game except the peanuts are free all right guys so i'm down at pedrick pond and i uh, just met this young gentleman what's your name buddy luke, luke. All right, so Luke's down here. Let's see, you're throwing a wacky rig, Cinco. Yeah. What, what else you got, a rattle trap? Yeah. Is that the uh, one knocker? Excalibur. Excalibur, okay. Well, yeah, anyway, he said that he wanted some finesse worms. So legit, just grab a huge, dude, huge handful, huge. Like, I've, I've, like bigger than that, come on. <laughs> like, you can literally have like 70 of those. As many as you want, dude. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's offer, up the free offer, so. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to give them all away today, but I don't think I'll have time. But uh, what? Some of my grandpa. Yeah, absolutely. Your grandpa can have some. All right. Big pile, buddy. And uh, oh, I took them out. I had some. Uh, I had some freezer bags to put them in. So, but uh, if y'all have like a tackle box, you can just throw them in there. Yeah. So, but anyway, yeah, give me a sub. Uh, World's worst fishing. World's worst so, like, if y'all are ever like, if you and your grandpa are ever interested in like a hobby. You can you can get into to making your own lures like just yeah. like that like my whole channel will show you how to do that you can be making those stick worms you know okay. in no time dude that's that's some of the easiest stuff right there so but yeah yeah hey hey good luck I know the weather yeah I know the weather kind of sucks today and uh, I've 
I don't fish here a lot, actually. The first time I caught a bass here, it was a six-pounder. Yeah, and then one of my friends, he was off of the uh, dock over there. One of my friends, okay. One of my friends kept coming here, and he, he would catch a few, but I got to a point where I just couldn't catch a fish out of here. Not at all. And then there used to be a guy that would drive his golf cart, and he was here every... I don't, I don't know. I don't know his name. Yeah, there was a guy that used to drive a golf cart out here, and he showed me pictures of like double digits out of here. I mean, there's some absolute tank bass in here. So yeah, well, hey, enjoy the worms. Very nice to meet you. And uh, yeah, t tell all your buddies, you know, hey, this channel will show you how to make fishing lures, and maybe they'll get some free baits. So right. y'all have a good day, man. All right. Well, we still have a ton of these green worms left. We probably gave away about half. Definitely. Um, gave away more of the uh, finesse worms than the ribbon tails, which is surprising because the seven inch ribbon tail, that, that's my baby right there. So anyway, that's probably all the time I'm gonna have this weekend to film, and I don't wanna have to wait another weekend till I can get out, because uh, I kinda wanna go like fishing of my own. But uh, what was really cool was that even the two groups who don't necessarily do a whole lot of bass fishing, uh, the second group definitely did, but even the first group did not turn them down. Uh, and then the, uh, the young man, Luke, that we just met at the pond by my house, um, you know, he was definitely excited to have him. You can tell that he's a young angler. And so hopefully this will just encourage him to, uh, to, to keep fishing. Maybe he and his grandpa can even get into the hobby themselves. So anyway, fun video. We'll definitely do something like this again. Uh, I think this is kind of a fun concept. Let's make a few things and then go around and kind of share the love with the local fishing community. All right, everyone, we are gonna wrap this one up. Uh, thank y'all so much for watching. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Definitely a, sort of a, a new concept. I've never done anything like it before. Uh, if you wanna see more videos like this, please let me know down in the comments below. Like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we will catch you next time.